The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Yeah, yeah. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Parquet Margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say. Their favorite margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Last week, on a gentle breeze scented with magnolias and peach blossoms, a lady blew into Summerfield. The event evoked conversation at the corner drugstore. She's Leela Ransom's cousin, you say, Jane? Yes, Peter. And she's from the same town, Savannah. Her name is Adeline Devereaux Fairchild. You don't say. <laughs> The southern breeze settled down right next door to the great Gildersleeve and started a little whirlwind of speculation that stirred the great man to his ample depths. Don't see her. Maybe if I lean out the window a little. Is that you, Mr. Gildersleeve? What? Uh, hello. I thought that was you peeking out. I was peeking at you, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we now find the great Gildersleeve plowing home in a heavy snow with a light heart a little early. Yeah, she wasn't peeking out this time. That's what I like about her. She's unpredictable. <laughs> Hello. Anybody home? Hey, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're home early, ain't you? I thought I'd work around the yard a little before it gets dark, Bertie. Spring's just around the corner. Is that where it is? It's still February. <laughs> Well, nothing like getting an early start. Might just trim the hedge between us and Miss Fairchild. You mean you're going to prune them icicles? <laughs> <laughs> Must be something out there that needs doing. Uh, uh, hey, what's that nice smell? It could be either one of two things. What's that, Bertie? Miss Adeline Fairchild's perfume or uh, Creole Gumbo. Huh? <laughs> she left here just a little while ago. She sure is nice. Brought over some Creole gumbo she made and wants us to try. She did? Well, uh, did um, she say anything, Bertie? Yes, sir. She wanted to know how were we all. Nothing more? She kind of looked around the place and said I sure was a good housekeeper. Anything else? Well, she admired Miss Marjorie's picture in there on the radio, and she said Leroy looked like a perfect little gentleman. Hasn't met Leroy, I see. <laughs> did she, uh, did she say anything about me? Yes, but she said she hoped you'd enjoy the gumbo. Well, might just try a little of that uh, Creole gumbo. Ought to taste mighty good on a cold day like this. Mmm, nice and thick. I'll just take a little. Mmm, chew funk. <laughs> what does it need, Bertie? <laughs> Probably a good cook. Uh, something missing, all right. She said it was Creole gumbo out of New Orleans. Mm, tastes like leftovers from the Mardi Gras. <laughs> what are we having for dinner? Your favorite dish, Mr. Gilsey, pot roast and brown potatoes, a la birdie. Oh, wonderful. Let's take some of our pot roast over to Miss Fairchild, repay the southern hospitality. I don't know. It's Yankee pot roast. <laughs> well, real chance at Bertie. Yes, as soon as it's done, I'll put a slice on the tray and take it over. Well, uh, you fix the tray. I shall take it over as soon as I run upstairs and freshen up a bit. Sweet Adeline, my Adeline. <laughs> now we got a singing waiter. <laughs> Well, I'm ready, Bertie. So am I. Here's the tray, Mr. Gilsey. How's that? Oh, fine. 
Uh, better give me a little more of that roast, Bertie. Prices are coming down. Okay. And a few more potatoes. You know how they load those southern tables. Okay. Uh, oh, put some gravy in a bowl, too, Bertie, for the potatoes. Okay. Now, let's see. What's for dessert? Beef dish apple pie, Mr. Gill, please. Okay. <laughs> Nobody bakes apple pie like you, Bertie. There. That ought to do it. You say it. Help me get this tray out, Bertie. Pretty heavy. Hi, Bertie. What's for dinner? Leroy, watch that door. Oh, hi, Al. What's going on? Are we moving? No, Leroy. Just a little something I'm taking over to Miss Fairchild next door. Little something? Now, Leroy, I'm merely returning Southern hospitality. Miss Fairchild brought over a bowl of gumbo this afternoon. All that good stuff for a bowl of soup? What a sucker. Leroy. <laughs> Get your hands off this tray. Okay, just feel them. Well, don't. But I'm going to starve. You wait for dinner. Uh, have I got everything, Bertie? Wait, I didn't load on this pan of hot biscuits yet. Oh, I'll just stick it under my chin. Okay. Can you raise your bottom chin up a little more? <laughs> there now. You got it? Got it. Eh. Uh, how do I look? Just like the friendship train. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, Leroy. Hold open the door. <laughs> Child, it's me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, what do you got under that tablecloth, you cute little man, you? <laughs> Just a little surprise. Thought you might like to sample our birdies' cooking. I certainly would. I've never heard of anything so nice and thoughtful in my whole life. But I'm just letting you stand there. Bring it all in. You come, too. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you. Of course, this won't compare with your Creole gumbo. It was... Well, I never tasted anything like it. <laughs> really? Well, I'm mighty glad you enjoyed it. Just put the tray down here, Mr. Gildersleeve. All right. This is a little heavy. <laughs> you shouldn't have done all this, Mr. Gildersleeve. You know the man, I declare. Oh, it's nothing much. Knew you wouldn't feel like fixing dinner after making all that gumbo. Well, of course I don't have a cook yet. The gumbo was just a little trick I picked up one time in New Orleans when I was there for Mardi Gras. Oh, then it was leftovers. No. <laughs> yes, delicious, delicious. Oh, would you like me to get you another bowl, Mr. Gildersleeve? I've got gobs of it in the kitchen. Uh, no, thanks. Kind of filling. Couldn't eat another bite. Oh, this roast looks wonderful. And there's enough for a whole family. It's too bad you can't join me. Well, if you insist, I'll force myself. <laughs> Where's the ketchup? That was a simply scrumptious dinner, Mr. Gildersleeve. You don't know what a treasure you have in Bertie. Oh, yes, I do. Best cook in the country. But bringing the tray over was my little idea. Only a sweet man like you would have thought of that. <laughs> Mercy, Mr. Gildersleeve, I've hardly been in town a week, and here we are having dinner together at my house. Well, Cousin Leela's house, rather. I bet it'd make her jealous. Uh, what she doesn't know won't hurt her way down in Savannah. Cousin Leela and I have always been rivals one way or another. She was always trying to take my bows away from me without any success, I might add. Yeah, that's Leela. Once she even tried to get Bertie away from us. That didn't work either. Well, I can't say that I blame her for trying. Bertie's a Jew. You bet. But let's talk about you, Miss Fairchild. Uh, Adeline. Oh, me? Well, there's not much to talk about, Mr. Gildersleeve. I grew up so sheltered and all. Yes, you can tell that. <laughs> Just about my entire life history is recorded in that little old snapshot album there on the coffee table. Oh? Oh. Mind if I take a peek? Oh, go right ahead, but snapshots rarely do justice to a girl with delicate features. <laughs> oh, a picture of you on the beach. I'd recognize you anywhere. <laughs> uh, who's this fellow buried in the sand behind you? Friend of yours? That's Jefferson Davis Calhoun. Huh? 
Uh, I, oh, he was a wolf, Mr. Gildersleeve. He followed me all over the south. Hmm. Sounds more like a bloodhound. <laughs> and what a voice that man had. When he sang, I just completely evaporated. A good baritone could just turn me into a piece of putty. <laughs> Oh, it does something to me, Mr. Gildersleeve, like honeysuckle on a summer night, like moonlight on the bayou. Do you sing? Do I sing? I sang for you last night. Oh, of course. What am I thinking about? Sing again. What? Oh, come on now. Don't be a tear. No, no, I just don't feel like it. Well, I'll just turn on the radio then while we let our dinner settle. It's all right with me. That's pretty. Huh? La dee 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 dee. That's nice. Do you know the word? <laughs> and while in slumberland, madame, I'm begging for your lips. Do I know the words? <laughs> I haven't any right, madame, to do the things I do. <laughs> Just when I hold you tight, madame, you vanish with a night, madame. In dreams I kiss your hand, madame, and pray my dreams come true. La dee 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 dee. Well, Miss Fairchild, wonder if she's turned to putty. <laughs> Miss Fairchild. Oh, excuse me. I'm afraid I got lost for a moment, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> a penny for your thoughts. I was just thinking, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a cook like Birdie? <laughs> <laughs> well, good night. Thanks for Birdie's dinner. What a woman. Must be other things to talk about besides Bertie. Well, Gildy. Hooker. Up for stroll. Just walking off my dinner, Judge. You have to walk quite a ways to get that off. <laughs> Stop cackling, Judge. The neighbors will think we keep a goat. As a matter of fact, Gildy, I just stopped by to play you a game of checkers that you were out. I wasn't out. Just took some of Bertie's cooking over to Miss Fairchild. Come on in. Thank you. How is Miss Fairchild? Uh -huh. All she could talk about tonight was Bertie. Probably she's more interested in Bertie than she is in you. I sort of gathered that. These southern women like great store by good cooking, Gildy. You remember how Leela tried to hire Bertie away from you? Well, she'd better not try anything like that. I'd watch it, Gildy. If you lost Bertie, your home would absolutely fall to pieces. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Fairchild. Now, if you want my advice... Shh, that's Bertie on the telephone. Well, I'm still glad you enjoyed the dinner. What's that? We better talk business tomorrow. Here's Miss Gilkey. Good night. What did tell you, Gilkey? Bertie. Uh, was that Miss Fairchild? Yes, sir. Evening, Judge. Evening, Bertie. Good night. Got to go to bed. Got things to do tomorrow. But, Bertie. You're right, Judge. That Fairchild woman is trying to break up my home. <laughs> We'll be back with a great Gildersleeve in just a minute. Leroy, you know, is a boy with a mind of his own. Only yesterday he said... Boy, that parquet is absolutely, positively my favorite spread for bread. Those are strong words, Leroy. You must have a strong reason for liking parquet. Well, heck, it just plain tastes so good. And millions of families agree. Parquet is delicious. After all, it's a craft product. You know what that means? Quality. Right. Parquet margarine is made from only the choice products of American farms. And each delicious pound is enriched with 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. I never tasted them. Of course not, Leroy, but they're there. And they're necessary for a well-balanced diet. Nourishing parquet is the perfect topping for rolls, pancakes, muffins, and waffles, as well as bread. Yeah, and I know Bertie uses it for seasoning and cooking. Of course she does. Thrifty women like appetizing parquet because it's economical. Why, it actually costs less today than it did a year ago. No fool. Actually costs less. Millions of women know it's the better buy for both bread and budget. 
Millions of women serve parquet because it tastes so good. Try it, friends. Ask for parquet margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y parquet made by Kraft. Well, to the great Gildersleeve's dismay, his new neighbor has cast admiring eyes upon Bertie, giving our hero reason to suspect a dastardly blow is about to be struck where it'll hurt the most. Right in the stomach. And so the troubled man has spent a fitful night trying to sleep off his fears. And Bertie's pot roast dinner. And Miss Fairchild's Creole gumbo. Mumbo jumbo Creole gumbo. That's peculiar. He appears to be dreaming. That's what it means, Bertie. A good cook. But Bertie, don't you go over there. Miss Fairchild. I wanted to stop you before you got home and invite you over to dinner again this evening. Dinner this evening? Did you make some more Creole gum? Uh, gumbo, I mean. Oh, no, no. We'll have delicious pot roast. Oh. I have the most marvelous cook now. Who, who, who is she? I think you know her. Look, you can see her in through my kitchen window. Bertie, how could you? Bertie. Nightmares back to bed, all of you. I sleep sound as a log every night. Ah! Uncle Mort, you were shouting, Bertie, Bertie. Bertie? What's the trouble, Mr. Gilsey? Nothing, Bertie. Nice to see you're still here. Nice to see I'm here. Where else would I be at 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Bertie what? gets up at 7 to fix breakfast, don't get out of the kitchen till 8 at night, and then gets roused out at 2 o'clock in the morning just because it's nice to see me here? Well, <laughs> if that keeps up, Bertie won't be here. Yeah, but, Bertie, I had a night. Nice... I had a nightmare. Now she's upset. But she will leave. Gosh, the eggs are hard this morning. Bertie must still be sore, eh, Unc? Just brought in the breakfast and left us. Shh. Let's not be complaining, Leroy. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Marjorie. You're just in time. We're going to have a little meeting. Oh, what about? About Bertie. Seems she's a little upset this morning. Well, who wouldn't be? Well, we're all going to be more kind to Bertie starting this morning. I always have been kind to her. Pass the toast, Leroy. So have I. What thanks do I get? A cold egg. <laughs> well, I'm sure we can all help make living here more enjoyable for Bertie. So she'll never be tempted to leave us. Marjorie, you can start by helping her with the dishes after breakfast. After breakfast? I have to go to school. Well, the dinner dishes, then. And why don't you look around for a good course in home economics? What? Sure, so you can really help Bertie. Besides, you'll want to know all about those things when you get married. Sewing, sweeping, cooking. Uncle Mort, isn't that viewpoint a little old-fashioned? Old-fashioned? What's so old-fashioned about cooking? It will be by the time she gets married. Leroy! <laughs> Careful, young man. And you can start by cleaning up your room. There's something hanging on every door now. Hey, Piggy's up front. I gotta go. Leroy, excuse yourself. Okay, excuse me. And wipe your face before you leave the table. Okay. And comb your hair for school. Okay. Not with your hand, Leroy. Confound it. Oh. No wonder everybody has nerves around this place. Excuse me, too, Unky, darling. And I'm sure Bertie will get over her hub. Well, let's All hope right. so. Goodbye, Unky. Um, goodbye, my dear. Uh, well, maybe Bertie has gotten over her huff. No, guess not. 
guess I'd better go cheer her up. I'll even give her the day off. Sure. At least that'll keep her away from that Fairchild woman. <laughs> You're sly, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Bertie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bertie, I've just had a little talk with the family, and things are going to be different around here. Oh? Yeah, Marjorie's going to help you with the dishes tonight. Get you out earlier in the evening. Starting tonight. Yes. Yeah, sir. <laughs> and I've spoken to Leroy about his room. Yes, yeah, sir. And Bertie, why don't you take the rest of the day off? That would be nice, Mr. Gillsleeve. Uh, and I can go right over and help that nice Miss Fairchild clean her house. What? We got a little business to talk over, too. She hasn't got any help, you know. What? And she's so nice. Me and my big, fat, generous ideas. Hello, Phoebe. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this fine morning? Well, you might sell me a good cook if you have one in stock. How's okay. A cook. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid we're going to lose Bertie. Miss Fairchild is making a very obvious play for her. Oh? What would you do with a neighbor like that, Peavy? Well, I've heard of people getting married to share a place to live. You might work out an arrangement so you and Miss Fairchild could share the cook. No, Peavy. I don't want to get married. Well, of course, that's up to you. Some people do. I can just see Adeline showing Bertie that fancy lavender room and bath she can have. Well, worse things can happen than losing your cook. It's all right for you to say, but I bet you couldn't get along without Mrs. Peavy. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I recall the time she went home to her mother, I had a fine time batching it. Batching it? Breakfast was always my favorite meal. Mm -hmm. The only one, in fact. <laughs> Bacon powder patties and eggs. And then the next morning, just for variety, sourdough patties and eggs. Just for variety, eh? When it came to making baking powder patties and sourdough patties, that, that peculiar don't sound so good now. <laughs> Think I may take a box of candy home to Mrs. Peavy tonight. Oh, huh? candy. That's it, Peavy. I'll take Bertie some candy. She has a sweet tooth. Very well. How about this six-dollar box? Uh, it's not that sweet. <laughs> Something around two and a half. Well, then may I suggest some of these chocolate-covered cherries? Got them in fresh for Washington's birthday. Oh, not bad, Peavy. She's always admired Washington, father of our country. Or see, do you have any Lincoln candy? <laughs> no, but I think you have the germ of an idea there. Now, wrap them up, Peavy. I'll go phone Bertie. I'll tell her I have a surprise for her. That'll get her out of Adeline Fairchild's house. <laughs> Nothing like a little kindness to make people happy. <laughs> Party dress. What chances a man have with a box of candy? You take it now, you hear? Now then, hello? Never mind. Wrong number. Something wrong, Mr. Gildersleeve? She's trying to outbid me, Peavy. Give me the big box. And they have the larger cherry. Is there anything else? No, thanks, Peavy. The next step is legal. Gildy, five year contract, and you have the right to pick up Bertie's option. Yeah, that fair child woman can't lure my cook away. I'll show that southern siren. But how do you know Bertie will sign it? Don't you worry, Judge. A six dollar box of chocolate cherries says she will. What? Never mind. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Not home yet. Well, I'll put the candy right here on the table, on top of the contract. Then... Bertie, up! Oh, that's right, she isn't here. We would miss Bertie around here at that. Yes? Is Bertie here? Bertie? Well, not at the moment. Is the woman of the house in? I'm the woman of the, the man of the house. <laughs> you are? Well, Bertie told me to report here for a job. A job? Can mm -hmm. I take my bag in? Uh, no. 
And that was a little presumptuous of Bertie, I'd say. Well, she said to come here and talk to her about a job cooking. I'm sorry. Bertie's the only cook we've ever had and ever will have. Sorry. Goodbye. Yes, but... What's she... going on, Miss Gildersleeve? Bertie, where'd you come from? In the back way, me and Miss Fairchild. We saw you off at home, Mr. Gildersleeve. My, you know of a man walk briskly. Well, I feel briskly. I want to talk to both of you. Well, Bertie and I want to talk to you, too, but I think I should apologize a little first. There's no need to apologize. Just get this straight. Amelia, what you doing standing out there? I don't know, but I sure have been standing. <laughs> well, pardon me. Miss Fairchild, this is Amelia I was telling you about. Well, how do you do, Miss Fairchild? I think she'll make a wonderful cook for you. For Miss Fairchild? I thought she was for me. For you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Are you trying to steal my cook before she even sets the bag down? Me? <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Gillsleeve? Ain't my cooking been suiting you? Oh, of course it has, Bertie. You're the best cook in the world. Here, have some candy. Candy? Six dollar box. Oh, Mr. Gillsleeve, you're the best boss a person ever had. I think so. <laughs> Care to open the candy, Bertie? <laughs> And we'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. Are you looking for a better buy for your budget? A better spread for bread? Here's a buy that's better both ways. It's parquet margarine, the margarine of craft quality. It's the perfect topping for rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles, as well as bread. The rich, smooth, fresh flavor of parquet makes it the favorite spread in millions of homes. It's so wholesome and nourishing. Each wholesome pound is enriched with 15,000 units of important vitamin A. Remember, ask for parquet margarine for flavor, for quality, for nourishment, and for economy. It's the better buy. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs> My advice to you, Miss Fer- Adeline, <laughs> have Amelia sign this five-year contract so you won't have to go looking for a cook again. <laughs> well, if you say so, how can I ever thank you bringing over the contract and all? Nothing, nothing. Just happen to have one lying around the house. <laughs> I'm so scatterbrained about business matters. <laughs> it's nice to have a man so close. Yeah, well... Nice to be so close. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> <Yeah>. Good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, David Niven will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Don't miss it. Remember, tomorrow night... For exact time, see your local paper. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Do you like macaroni and cheese that's fluffy, light, and tender with the grand flavor of golden cheddar cheese in every tempting forkful? Then get Kraft Dinner from your food store tomorrow. Each package of Kraft Dinner contains two magic ingredients. There's special macaroni that cooks in just seven minutes and golden Kraft grated that you simply stir in. One package of Kraft Dinner makes four servings of macaroni and cheese. The cost? Only a few pennies per helping. You can't beat that for economy. Remember the name. It's Kraft Dinner. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.